Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. 3D jewelry modeling is not hard. Today I'm going to use the three major commands in this tutorial to show you how to make this twisting hoop earring. Are you ready? Let's get started. Let's take a look on this hoop earring and we want to dissect on how to make them first. So let me delete that one and let's take a look on it. We have a three different pattern going on here and they already been boiling into one piece here. So we need to know like how we are going to design flat and then we can flow it back to this part. That's starting from the scratch. First of all, we need to decide how big you want its the shape and uh, the size as well. So I want to snap it into the zero using the circle command. And I want a diameter to be 40 millimeters. So just type it 40 and hit enter here. We also want it to have an opening on the top. It depends on how big you want it to be open. Uh, I would like to cut it open roughly something like this so I can have some mechanism to edit up and roughly I will have at least about 10 millimeters there then I'm going to use that straight line to trim the one on the top so this is where the hoop earring is going to be the main body after that we need to find out how long is this piece so I want to type in length and it end up with 92.133 so that's making a copy we're gonna draw a straight line and exactly the same number I just copy and paste uh, that number holding my shift and I will get a straight line right there. I'm returning into the ghost view on all of them. All right, so you can see there are two lines here. This is to represent this one when it's flat. So we want to do the design on here. So first of all, that's decided what is uh, the width of this guy. And I'm going to simply just pipe it. So let's go ahead to pipe. I want to pipe it uh, for about three millimeter in the diameter. So let's click on the diameter and let's type it three. So something pretty big here. Well, actually it's not. Let's do it a little bit bigger. Let me do four millimeter in the diameter. So we got something like this. The second thing I wanted to do is I want to make a copy by just using the gumball and then just drag it out about right here. And then I'm just going to hit the all key. So that way I will make a duplication and then I'm just going to use the gumball holding the shift again and 3D scale. All right, so this is the second one that I have here and they are not this, quite the same length. So I'm just going to come into my top view just to be a little bit more accurate. It doesn't have to be exactly the same because we're going to add an end cap there, but just get it close. All right, so that's a second shape. I'm just going to turn into the red color so it's easier for you to see. Now, let's go ahead to measure with the dimension tool and we wanna measure in between here and here and know what is the distance. So it's 0.51, right? So I do wanna make a texture. I do not wanna texture more than 0.51 because it will, will be taller than this one. All right, so the pattern I'm going to have is I'm just gonna pipe it all the way around, but I need to have a line to pipe it. So let's take a look on the top view, and we're going to use the commands called contour. And what I wanted to do is you're gonna contour from here to here, and you wanted to contour for one millimeter. And then so that will give the a distance for one mini, every one millimeter you will have a, a curve and the curve will follow all the way around, right? So I don't need the one on the very end here. I just deselect it. Let's take on what we have here. After contour, you get this line and I'm just going to pipe it exactly the same number like we measure. So the radius, um, it's going to be 0.51. So then you will have this, the same height right here, uh, will be the same height with the first one. All right, so that is our second pattern. Let me just go ahead to boolean all of them. All right, so after boolean into one piece, we need a third one here. So I, again, I'm going to bring up this one and just moving about like this, somewhere about here and make it smaller if you want to. 
And I also want to make a copy here, just want it to be accurate. And I also want to measure from this point to this point is 0.56. All right, and then you can change it if you want to. Once you measure it, you can let go of that one. Uh, this one, I want a pattern is going in other direction. And again, you can see after with 3D scale, it's kind of getting uh, too short. So just 1D scale it back. And again, it doesn't have to be exact, but close. All right, this one right here, I'm going to turn it into the green color so it's easier for you to see. All right, let's take a look on the perspective. We want to duplicate uh, age uh, using the command dupedge, D-U-P-E-D-G-E. And then we're going to click it right here. And then so then we got that curve. With that curve, I wanted to pipe it. So let's go ahead to use the pipe command. And the, the radius is 0.56. And then so we got that first pattern there. And after that, I'm just going to look at, at my right view. And I'm just going to polar array this guy. So this guy, it's going to be polar array. And how many of them? I don't know. I'm just going to guess maybe 12 of them. And see if you like it. It's too many or not enough. It's, it's up to you. If you feel like that's too many, maybe we want to change to 10. Uh, so that has more definition there. And once you like it and just go ahead to Boolean union. All right. So now we have three shape right here. Okay. And what we wanted to do is Boolean union, all three of them. Okay. So now I'm just going to move it to the side. And this is the curve, the original curve that we still need this one. So I'm just going to move it to there and the rest of them, we just don't need it anymore. So I'm just going to delete those curves. with that curve right here. I'm going to mark it into the red color. So it's easier for you to see there's a line right in the middle. Okay. So with that line, uh, I actually want the line to be a little bit longer than my shape there. And so it's easier for me to see. And we are just going to making them align to the centers right there. And also I want to align to the center on my right view as well. All right. So then you can see this line is now right in the center. The first things first, we need to taper on both sides. So we want to use a taper command coming with the taper. And we're going to pick up the object. And I want to find a midpoint of here and coming over to my endpoint and just let them get smaller, something like this. All right, so you can see it is tapered from the middle to the end. And I'm going to do the same thing right here. We're going to go to the midpoint and coming into the other end. Let's come into a perspective. The other end right here and roughly about the same size. If you ask me if they need to be exactly the same, probably not because after twisting, it's hard to tell. All right, so as you can see from our front view, it's tapered on the both ends. Right. So that is that. Uh, the second thing that we wanted to do is we want to make sure it is twisting. Right. So we're going to come into the transform and then you have the twist command. You're going to snapping from this end to this end. We don't need to twist a lot. I don't want to get it too complicated. So I just wanted to have a one turn. So we need to physically making a circle all the way to the other side and holding the shift. So you can see the form is beautiful be twist. And let's take a look on the render view. All the shape is twisting there. All right. So I intentionally want to end to be a little bit more straighter. So after adding the end cap, they will look nicer. All right. You can adding the end cap here now if you want to. So we are just going to come into the solid, pick up this form and we are going to do roughly about this size and about this Y. All right. So to get a, like a bullish shape and then we're going to cap it, right? Once you cap it, I usually like to fill it the edges as well. So let's do like a point four maybe and pick up this end here. Then I'm going to turn around and align with our curve and just bring it in there and get it center if that work. All right. Also on the bottom here, 
you want to moving up as well. If it is like getting really thin and then the shape is coming out from inside, you might want to adjust it. And then again, coming into this one, we might need to move it down a little bit or maybe the end is too small. All right, so then we got this bullet shape. Uh, once you are done on one end, you can simply just mirror to the other side. So we're just gonna use the mirror and then uh, bring it to the other side. All right, so if you like this one, you can bowling and I'm just going to temporary to group it just in case I need to move it. All right, so let me turn it back to the ghost view. Now the next one will be easy. We're just going to use the flow. We're gonna use a flow. Flow is equal flow along curve. I'm gonna pick up this one, pick up our curve, and pick up our target curve. And let's take a look on the render view. Then you will see them. It's really nicely falling. Uh, to the other side. All you need to do is to edit up the design for your mechanism and that will be a hoop earring today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Whether you are a beginner or you are more advanced jewelry cat designer, there are three things you need to know to boost your jewelry cat design skill. I have a free webinar for you and the link is in the description below. Hope you like it and thank you for watching and I'll see you next.